I guess we'll start with introductions. I'm Michael Capucci. I'm the manager of engineering, as well as the drainage superintendent for the town of LaSalle. With me over there in the corner is uh, Brian. Uh, he's our CET here. He's helping us with the file uh, on this call, as well as the drainage engineer for the project, Gerard Rood from Rood Engineering. He put together our report for us. The um, the, the report for the Chappas drain, I believe, started back in 2016 with an on-site meeting in 2017. So it's been a while and we're finally nearing the end. And that's kind of what leads us here today is why we are having this PIC. Uh, the main reason is that it's been a while since we started this job. So we want to get everyone re-familiarized with it. Uh, but more importantly, we want to um, work out any problems or issues or concerns people have with the report. So this is our opportunity to talk to the residences, um, have them review the report and address any concerns that they might have. And then we can fix up the report and present it to council. Um, and uh, knowing that we've, we've heard everyone. And uh, the steps within the Municipal Drainage Act are to have uh, a meeting to to, to consider, which is would be next to a, a council meeting. And that meeting to consider is to discuss any engineering aspects of the report that might people might have issues with. And um, when we present the report to council, we like to, like I said, hash out any issues. And that's why we're having this PIC. After the meeting to consider, we have the quarter of revision, um, which would happen about a month or so after the, the first meeting. And uh, at the quarter revision, there's, there's discussions more on the financial side to ensure that uh, people are, um, are being charged accordingly based on their property. And then after the quarter revisions, the final report is uh, approved for the third and final reading of the bylaw. Now that whole process uh, is about, I don't even know, about four months long because there's certain dot timelines that we have to wait for in terms of, of appeals. Um, and at every one of those steps, all the residents would get an email or would get a letter regarding the meeting. So for instance, the meeting to consider uh, would be the next letter you would receive in the mail. It'd be very similar to the PIC that you got uh, for this meeting here. And it would just essentially say that the report's finalized. Uh, it's being presented to council for approval. Uh, should you have any issues or concerns or want to speak, you have the right to do so. And you'd be probably seeing that in the mail. If everything goes well with this report, uh, with, with, sorry, with this process, uh, if everyone's good with it, then you'd probably be seeing that in the mail within the next couple of weeks. So that's kind of what we're doing and why we're doing it. Um, like I said, the history of this, this drain project started back in 2016 or 17 with the, with the drain uh, essentially not being serviced um, properly. So there's uh, some sediment um, uh, in the drain that needs to get cleaned up as well as some bank stabilization. Um, from the review of the report, I don't believe there's any new uh, bridge work that needs to happen. I think there's one culvert that's kind of getting replaced um, or, or regraded. Uh, so the overall cost, I think, is pretty low compared to some of the other reports that we've had recently, which is good. Uh, but yeah, it's essentially just to clean up the, the Chappas drain. Um, and so Gerard, I guess I can, is there any anything else you want to speak to regarding the report at this time? Maybe just kind of go over that just a little bit and I'll let you speak to that. Thank you, Mike. So as Mike outlined, it's basically the report provides for repair and improvement to the section of the upstream portion of the drain uh, from Gulfview Drive northerly to the unopened road allowance that is known as uh, Nomaka Avenue. And then the drain turns easterly and stops just short of Malden Road, drain, uh, Malden road uh, which is County Road number three. Uh, all of the abutting lands that have access or have flows going to the drain are the ones that are affected by the works that are being done. We also received a special request from the uh, Essex Golf and Country Club for relocation of the drain across their properties at the location of bridge number two. So 
So bridge number two can be abandoned and the drain relocated to the perimeter on the north side and east boundary of the uh, Essex Golf and Country Club driving range that they will be uh, setting up there for uh, their use and everything like that. Um, bridge number three was found to be in fair condition and will just be cleaned out as part of the works to ensure that the uh, sediment and debris and uh, minor blockages in the drain that are holding up some of the drainage on the north reach of the drain will be cleared out and allow for proper flows. And as Mike mentioned, we are uh, adjusting uh, bridge enclosure one to provide proper outlet at the design grade of the drain. So the pipe will be lowered slightly to prevent any water backing up, which causes problems with sediment building up faster and also with standing water causing uh, potential mosquito issues or problems like that that people would often have issues with. And the uh, cost of that enclosure repair will be between the three parcels that are affected that include the two abutting parcels and the enclosure extends into the uh, Essex Golf and Country uh, property as well so that they share in the cost of the work to put that pipe to a proper grade to provide sufficient and adequate outlet for the upstream drainage portion of the works. Uh, the report includes information on bridge cost sharing for all the bridges located along the full length of the drain, which outlets into the uh, creek that's located south of Malden Road, uh, Road, County Road 3 there at the south limit of it. Uh, the report includes a maintenance schedule of assessment that allows for the town to properly assess costs to the affected owners for any future maintenance works that are required to the lands um, that are located adjacent to or upstream of the drainage works when those works are carried out. So that I believe is the basic summary of what the report provides for as part of the repairs and improvements to the drain and the maintenance schedule for future maintenance and upkeep of the drain, including the bridge cost sharing table. And uh, if there's any other uh, concerns or issues that are out there, then this uh, public information center meeting is well was scheduled to get some input so that those concerns or issues if necessary can be included in the final report that will be prepared and then goes to council for the consideration meeting. Um, so that I think is the summary overall, Mike, if there's any questions from uh, any of the parties, uh, I'll do my best to answer them or you can provide some uh, town input on clarifications to the owner regarding the uh, process, which you've already done a very good description of how everything will progress as we move through this meeting and forward to the final report and consideration and quarter revision meetings with uh, appeal options available to the owners as well. Perfect. No, that's good. Thank you, Gerard. So uh, thank you for the summary. Um, the one other thing I do want to bring up, just um, it's kind of relevant to this drain as it, as it does relate to town policies is um, in that some of the costs here are lower considered uh, when you when you looked at some of the other drains that we've done. Um, there is a $50 um, limit on charges. So if your assessment is $50 or lower, uh, the town absorbs those costs and there is no charge to the landowner. I think there's a few people in there that that would relate to, uh, just as a heads up, that is their policy. Um, and the one thing I do want to reiterate is that this is a public meeting um, and you and anyone seeing this or Lisa or whoever didn't make it you guys if if you had any questions you're always encouraged to give us a call myself or Brian here please give us a call and we can uh, answer your questions give you a report uh, meet you on site whatever you guys need to kind of explain that so I just want to put that out there as well so that's everything the PIC in a nutshell it's it's kind of the summary and and any questions anyone has um, we had, I think, uh, well, we had, we had, we were supposed to have 20, about 20 people show up. Lisa's the only one and she signed up to, to have a question. So Lisa, if, if you'd like, we'd unmute you. And if you have any questions, maybe you don't, which is fine as well. But if you have any questions, you can 
go ahead. And if not, then that's that's cool too. Okay. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Um, so this is quite the report. And uh, just trying to understand, even, I, I mean, I don't want to appear stupid or anything, but um, I just would like to know the definition when you have the, the columns like value of benefit, value of outlet, um, what does that, what does that even mean? Jared, do you want to do that or? Yeah, I can provide a quick response to that. Okay. Um, so under the drainage act, the assessments that are made to properties are for the benefit they receive from being in proximity of the drain and being able to direct their flows directly into the drainage works. And uh, the definition as outlined on page six of the report is that benefit means the advantages to any lands, roads, buildings or other structures from the construction improvement, repair or maintenance of a drainage works such as will result in a higher market value or increased crop production or improved appearance or better control of surface or subsurface water or any other advantages relating to the betterment of lands, roads, buildings, or other structures. Outlet liability assessment reflects the amount of flow that's contributed from each property, which is based on the property side size and the runoff coefficient that uh, is calculated based on the land use uh, for the property. Uh, Open agricultural lands would typically have a runoff factor somewhere around uh, 0.1 factor. Uh, developed sites like residential lots and stuff, they would have runoff factors somewhere in the range of 0.35 to 0.4, so that they have more water that they discharge and their outlet liability assessment rate per acre is slightly higher than uh, lands that are basically just open, vacant, and used for agriculture. The uh, definition from the Drainage Act outlet liability means the part of the cost of the construction, improvement, or maintenance of a drainage works that is required to provide such outlet or improved outlet lands and roads that use a drainage works as an outlet or for which when the drainage works is constructed or improved, an improved outlet is provided either directly or indirectly through the medium of any other drainage works or of a swale, ravine, creek, or water course may be assessed for outlet liability. The assessment for outlet liability shall be based upon the volume and rate of flow of the water artificially caused to flow upon the injured land or road or into the drainage works from the lands and roads liable for such assessments. Every drainage works constructed under this act shall be continued to a sufficient outlet which is an obligation under the common law and the Drainage Act legislation. All owners must discharge their flows to a sufficient outlet and the Drainage Act provides for construction of a drainage works municipal drain that can convey those flows to that sufficient outlet and thereby eliminates all liability and risks associated to the owner's discharge of their flows into the drainage works. Um, hopefully that provides a basic definition for that, Lisa. Okay, thank you. It, yeah, so to, to summary in short, how much water you produce, right? green water you produce, and kind of your distance uh, and the type of property you have as it relates to the drain, there's kind of two factors. Okay, okay. And um, just another question. So, you know, I looked up our, our uh, you know, where we're assessed at, and I'm fine with it. I'm not going to argue with it. But uh -huh. um, what is uh, like, what is the, what do you do? Like, do you have an obligation to the landowner if that assessment goes up or do they just yeah. get that in the mail? You know what I mean? Like if, if you've kind yeah. of, you started work and things aren't going to plan <laughs> and you're finding problems and you're, you're thinking that it's gonna be a little bit more, do you have to um, inform the landowner or do they yeah. just get that in the, in the mail? So I, Gerard, correct me if I'm wrong, I think there's a 33% threshold. So your assessment, I don't know, say it's a hundred bucks. Yeah. It's, it's a hundred bucks. We're going to tender the work and say it comes in right at a hundred. Mm -hmm. if, if it goes to a point where it, the costs are now 33% greater, mm -hmm. I believe Gerard, 
we have to either, I mean, you're talking about in field work, but we would have to let the, the, uh, the, the, um, uh, homeowners or property owners know, um, is that correct, Gerard? Or yeah, or that is all be, correct. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, the Drainage Act has a clause in it that if the uh, tender price exceeds the engineering report estimate by more than 33%, another meeting has to be scheduled with the owners just to make them aware of that increase in cost that will be shared between them with their assessment basically being increased from the amount in the drainage report by that uh, final yes. increase of percentage above the 33% of the uh, original amount that was provided for under the legislation. And at that point, uh, the municipality can discuss with the owners on how to proceed. Uh, typically in the last couple of years, we have had some problems with the high inflation rates and escalations and everything with projects exceeding the report estimate, but owners and drainage boards and councils have always approved to move ahead because trying to retender it would likely result in even higher costs with continued inflation and uh, more competition possibly from other contractors trying to pick up the work so that we have always been able to move ahead. But uh, that special meeting is set up just to make the people aware of the uh, situation with the higher cost and then having some open discussions on about how everybody actually wants to proceed and a decision made by the uh, would be town council in this situation uh, because they are the ones that are in charge of the project for adopting the report. Okay. Yeah. So I guess to answer your question, Lisa, um, you just by approve, just if we go through it, you guys aren't on the hook for, you know, uh, you know, for whatever the cost can go up there. We, there is thresholds built in to, okay. to, uh, to save, to, to, to protect you guys. Within. Sure, sure. And just one other question mm -hmm. and then I'm done with you. Um, so this, this report is giving an estimate on the, like the maintenance schedule, construction schedule or whatever it's, it's called. Um, and that's done by the engineer. Um, but is the town of LaSalle, do you, does the town itself have its own, um, how do I want to say it? Is there any other maintenance costs that you assess on top of this assessment? You know what I mean? Like, do you attribute any more costs to to what is in this report? Like the the, the town? I, the town. You know what like, I mean? Um, not exactly. So for this drain, for the, for the Chappas drain, the assessment schedule is what you would be charged. Yes. Um, and then in the future maintenance, when we do maintenance on the drain, you will be, be charged accordingly just for the right. Chappas drain. Okay. All so right. We, the town isn't going to, so I don't know. I don't know if, I, I think the answer is no, but I'm not fully understanding the question. I don't think I'm asking it correctly. So that's yeah. okay. That's okay. Um, yeah, that's it. I guess, that's all I guess I have. Lisa, let me, let me answer this. Uh, like the, the town has other drain, uh, like other drains, like other yes. municipal drains. Those residents who live on those areas, they pay for their drainage maintenance as well. The town has like ditches and yes. um, roadside ditches, and that is a uh, that that is the only thing that goes and is paid through your taxes. It means right. that, but they're different. The municipal drain stuff is different than like okay. a roadside ditch. So maybe okay. that's kind of what you're asking. Maybe, uh, yeah. But but for municipal drain stuff, the property owners pay pay their shares. Okay. And we All the right. town isn't going to come ask for anything else other than what's what's asked for in the report. Okay. Okay. Then that's all I have. That's it. Well, yes. very good. Thank you, Lisa. Um, I think with that, no one else has showed up, so maybe they were satisfied with with either calling in or reading the report. So. Um, Thank you, Lisa, for showing up. Uh, thank you, Gerard, for, for attending as well. Um, and um, I guess the next step here, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll wait till the end of the week to see if anyone else has any comments. And then we'll start, the, uh, start getting the letters ready for the meeting to consider within a month. So 
again, thank you, everyone, and uh, we'll talk to talk to you soon.